Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with natural logarithm or ln. That's what ln stands for and the base is e in this case, which is Euler's number. So we have ln x over x equals ln square root of 2 and we're going to be solving for x values. So first of all, let's go ahead and write ln square root of 2 as ln 2 to the power 1 half. Now, since this power can be moved to the front, let's go ahead and do it. 1 half times ln 2 by using properties of logarithms. And then 1 half times something means just half of that thing. So we can write this as ln 2 over 2. So this is significant because this gives us a really nice equation. ln x over x equals ln 2 over 2. And what is your first impression of this? It means x equals 2 works, right? Because if I replace x with 2 on the left-hand side, I get the right-hand side. So x equals 2 is a valid solution. But the million-dollar question is, is that the only solution? That's what we're, we're going to explore. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from a calculus standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and define f of x as ln x over x. That's my function. And I'm going to differentiate it. Take the derivative. How do you differentiate a quotient? The quotient rule, the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiply by the bottom, minus the derivative of x, 1 times the top, which is ln x, and all over x squared. Easy, right? Okay. Now, x cancels out, leaving us with f prime of x equals 1 minus ln x over x squared. So the derivative is important because it kind of gives us an idea how the function behaves, whether it's increasing or decreasing on a certain interval. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to make a table, find out the intervals on which f is increasing and f is decreasing. And from there, we're going to try to find a maximum or a minimum. So let's go ahead and do it. Set this equal to 0, find the critical point. This implies 1 minus ln x equals 0. That implies ln x equals 1, and that implies x equals e. Because our base is e here, you can use the definition, or you can do the exponential, e to the ln x equals e to the 1, e to the ln x is x, and x equals e. All right, so that's our critical value, and that's the only critical value because we only get one solution from uh, setting the derivative equal to 0. So let's go ahead and make a table. I know some folks are going to use the second derivative test, which is perfectly fine, but I like this one better. It's more visual, and also, I don't want to take the second derivative. It's kind of painful, sometimes. f prime and f, we're going to mark the critical point here, and that is e. Great. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can uh, put the signs there. So, notice that f prime is 1 minus ln x over x squared. If x is greater than e, ln x is going to be greater than 1, and 1 minus ln x is going to be negative. x squared cannot be negative, so we're going to have a negative for values of x that are larger than e. Otherwise, f prime is going to be positive. And you can always test it out, like replace x with 1, you get a positive f prime. Make sense? And 1 happens to fall here, so you only need one value to test. This means that our function is going to be increasing on this interval and decreasing on this interval, which also means that it has a maximum at x equals e. So we have a max at x equals e. Uh, to be more specific, it is at e comma 1 over e. Because if you replace x with e in f of x, you get ln e over e, which is 1 over e. So that's our maximum point for f. And also notice that we are trying to solve the following equation. ln x over x is equal to ln 2 over 2. We said that x equals 2 is a solution, but is that the only solution? And how can we tell, right? So here's what we can do. First of all, notice that 2 is less than e. So if the line, uh, if we have an intersection point at x equals 2, and we have a curve that is increasing first and then decreasing. So our curve is kind of like this. And we do get a solution at x equals 2. So this is not necessarily the graph, but I'm just kind of telling you. Suppose this is x equals 2. 
that kind of tells me that there must be another intersection point because uh, this function attains the maximum value for x values that are greater than 2, which is e in this case, 2.7 something, right? So let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. So I'm going to rewrite this, ln x over x. Oops. ln x over x equals ln 2 over 2. And obviously, x equals 2 is valid. But notice that in this expression, I can do the following. I can multiply both the top and the bottom by 2. And how does that help? Well, this gives us, if you move it, ln 4 over 4. And guess what? ln x over x equals ln 4 over 4 implies x equals 4 also works. And isn't that interesting? Well, maybe not super interesting, but at least we know that there's another solution. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this function and see what happens uh, at other values. So, here's our graph of y equals ln x over x. And y equals ln root 2, and that is actually, you can also write this as ln 2 over 2, by the way, same thing. Notice that they intersect at two points. Let me make it a little larger here so you can see better. We have a solution at 2, and we have a solution at 4. And since our maximum is going to be in between, there's not going to be any other intersection point because outside those values, our function is always going to be below the line y equals ln square root of 2. Make sense? So that means there's only one, there's only two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.